call to worship. Pastor Lyle has chosen Psalm 111 to read this morning. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Full of honor and majesty is his word, and his righteousness endures forever. He is king now by his provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people all of his works in the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the name of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His grace endures forever. And once again, we're going to open with hymn number eight. And welcome, Pastor Lyle, back with us. Thank you.
words of assurance as we, in humble sincerity, admit our shortcomings. God hears us. God knows us and gracefully forgives us. In God, the three in one, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we live and breathe and have our very being, and we are forgiven. in his 
role as a leader. He served as a prophet and priest who followed the direction of the Holy Spirit and led those following him to do the same. In this passage, Moses refers to the event on Mount Horeb when God issued the Ten Commandments. If you remember, the mountain was burning with fire and smoke, and the people heard the voice of the Lord out of the uh, smoke and the fire, and they were terrified. And they were afraid of dying if they encountered the Lord. So going back to the reading now. Then the Lord replied to me, Moses, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you, Moses, from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of that prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that that prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded, that prophet shall die. This ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and you can print your name right there on the end, on the heart. Let us be together in prayer. Gracious God, we come together in Jesus' name, in the name, in the nature of love. We thank you for your presence within our hearts as we allow your Holy Spirit in. We thank you for that presence within our hearts, and we thank you for your presence, your Holy Spirit's presence in this faith community among all of these hearts. The gospel message is from Mark, gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. Jesus and the disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus revealed to him, saying, Be silent and come out of you. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. <coughs> the people, they were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
truths through the lens of the Gospels, the Gospel stories. The people in the Gospel passage in the synagogue were all amazed when Jesus taught with authority, not only by his interpretation of the scriptures, but also with that exercising of the unclean spirit, the demon from man. They were all amazed, asking over, asking each one over and over, what is this? A new teaching. A new teaching with authority. That's what Jesus does, doesn't he? He provides us with a new understanding of God's love for us. Jesus' name and nature are recognized by the unclean spirit who calls him Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy One of God. The people in the synagogue act differently, don't they, uh, to this new teaching than the people who are following Moses in the Old Testament story. The difference here is the people in the synagogue listening to Jesus were amazed rather than fearing for their lives as the Hebrew people did with Moses. Jesus showed that he came to save rather than punish, and he shows power over evil. He showed that he is stronger than our worst enemy. But the best thing about Jesus is that he never uses his strength to punish or hurt people. Instead of a slap on the wrist, he uses his power to help. That's because Jesus came to earth to show God's love for us. When you and I follow Jesus' example, we can use God's love in our hearts in ways to help others rather than hurt them. Now, I've never seen an exorcism, but I have seen transformation take place. And I'm going to share with you an experience that I had. And it was perhaps the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name releasing a, a hospital patient from an unclean spirit. I was visiting this patient and his wife in the hospital many years ago. This is kind of a scenario of what happened. It was my first visit as a volunteer for a group of hospital volunteers called Befrienders at Genesis Medical Center in Davenport, Iowa. And the experience, the transformative experience that I observed and I felt myself involved the patient, his wife, as, as well as myself. The patient was depressed with lines of anxiety written on uh, his face and his wife's. He had been healthy all of his life, and then he had a serious heart attack. He was concerned about what the implications were for that, for his life, with his, his wife also. He and his wife were in their second marriage, having lost their respective spouses to death, and they had met in church a few, a few years earlier. They fell in love and they decided to get married in church. And this is where a really strange event happened. They felt understandably betrayed by the pastor who forgot to be at the church to marry them. And they never went back to church. As a new volunteer, and way before I became a hospital and hospice chaplain, I was very self-conscious about prayer, having never prayed with the patient. After listening and connecting with the patient and his wife, I offered to pray for them. I offered to pray for them either down in the chapel or there in the room at the end of the visit. And I had, hope, I had hoped, of course, that they'd say, yeah, just, you can just pray for me down in the chapel. I'd be fine. But, you know, am I just me? They said, pray now, please. 
So I prayed a prayer. Not particularly flowery or uh, smooth, but it was a sincere prayer asking for God's blessing of healing and holiness, <coughs> strength and energy for both the patient and his wife. I have to tell you, after I opened my eyes up after that prayer and I looked at both of them, my mouth must have dropped because gone <coughs> were the lines of anxiety and worry and replaced with smiles and light of hope in her eyes. I was just blown away. I did not anticipate the power of prayer or the power of the Holy Spirit's presence in that visit. The sense of the Holy Spirit in that sacred space and the hospital visit changed them and it changed me with their decision to return to church and my sense of call in pursuing some type of ministry in the chapel uh, area. There were other patients that I was privileged, privileged to uh, enter into sacred space with using both prayer and scripture and music. And I'm so thankful to have been a witness of God's love in that ministry. The other passage that I read this morning from Deuteronomy is kind of a tough one to hear, isn't it? It talks about a prophet that God will raise, raise up from the community who will speak in God's name like Moses has. And the passage implies that you better listen or else. <laughs> so there's two questions that, that came to me as I was studying this and, and trying to figure out well, how should I incorporate this? What does it all mean? And, and there's two questions. First of all, what is a prophet? And second, secondly, and probably more importantly, is how will I know, how will we know, if the words of the prophet are really true, spoken in the name, spoken in the nature of God? The answer to the first question, what is a prophet? Well, a prophet is appointed by God to speak to people godly truths. The prophet or prophetess may speak words predictive of future events, but more likely, their word is holding those people in power accountable when the powerful step outside of God's will. How do we know if a prophet's words are true? How do we know by what criteria do we determine whether or not our motivation or their motivations are either Holy Spirit driven or ego driven. So is a person who is looked upon as a prophet, are their words true or false? Many preachers, including myself, begin sermons with, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, strength Perhaps a better petition prayer would be, may your words be put into my mouth and write your words, write your law on my heart and our hearts, O oh Lord. May the words I speak be yours, O oh God. And yet, not all preachers are prophets, and certainly I would call myself a prophet. The answer to the question of how we will know the prophet's words are true are hinted at in the Psalms passage that we read this morning responsibly. It speaks of wisdom beginning with the fear of the Lord. I feel the need to point out that the type of fear that they're talking about here is one of awe and reverence as opposed to incapacitating fear of the type that the Exodus passage spoke of. 
Those people were so fearful that they were not ready to have a personal relationship with God that is now available to us through Jesus Christ. Also, these psalms that we read uh, responsibly portray those who fear Yahweh as mirroring, mirroring divine attributes. And what are those divine attributes? What can we use as a criteria for whether the prophet is speaking correctly? The divine attributes are righteousness, graciousness, mercy, justice, and uprightness. The New Testament has much to say about false prophets and giving us detailed criteria to measure true prophetic words. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets. You will know them by their fruits. What are the fruits? Well, they're mentioned in uh, the book of Galatians. The fruits of the Spirit are love joy, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's probably more, but that's the list that the, that the book of Galatians list. So, Custer Community Church, you are to be congratulating on spreading these fruits of the Spirit in your prophetic witness prophetic witness to the gospel message. This, this weekend I got on uh, the uh, internet and took a look at all of the various activities and events that, that you guys have sponsored and, and uh, developed for this particular church and the community. There were 26 of them. I'm not going to list them all but they, they range from um, the Weave program, Women Against Violent Environments, the Food Drive yeah, for the Storehouse, Kids Time program after school, the outreach program provided by coffee and, and tea baskets, Christmas caroling, the Select a Gift program, uh, the letters of support to military veterans. Being a veteran myself, I can appreciate that. Great, you baked brownies and cookies for the all volunteer fire station. Uh, donations to relieve people in Ukraine during the war. Prayer shawls. School backpack program. Summer sack lunch program. UCC special mission, mission offerings, five for five. The annual motorcycle bike rally breakfast, meals on wheels, meet and, meet and eat community activities, Ministerial Alliance Christmas Select a Gift, Easter Sunrise Service, Custer State Park. It's amazing what you guys have done. These examples are spreading the fruits of the Spirit around and the wonderful prophetic witness of God's love through Jesus Christ, making the world a better place on earth as it is in heaven. And may God continue to bless you in your ministries. As uh, I've mentioned before, uh, my sermons are always a work in progress. So this morning, after finishing, me, after finishing the, uh, the sermon, the word of the Lord came to me and said, "Add this." As I had mentioned to you earlier uh, in my sermons, uh, that, well, let me back up. The New Testament also has another example of what a true prophet should be. John the Baptist and his humility. He spoke a witness of repentance and forgiveness of sins. And he said, of Jesus whom he prepared the way for. I am unworthy to untie the thong of his sandals. It's almost a paradox, isn't it? Humility 
And he's probably one of the most humble prophets in the Bible. So, beware of anybody who says they're a prophet speaking in God's name who's not humble. Especially if they say, I'm the most humble prophet there is. <laughs> <laughs> May we have the wisdom that comes from God as we hear God's word for ourselves and listen to those modern prophets who claim to speak in God's name and nature. Amen. <laughs>
Let us be together in prayer. Gracious God, we gather together in your name and in the nature of love. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your promise where two or more are gathered in your name. In your nature of love, you are present within our hearts and among us in relationship in this faith community that is customer community church. You have heard our thankfulness for joy and you have heard our concerns for a cancer diagnosis of Justin. We ask for your healing presence with his family. May he sense your love and your strength give him courage and guidance so that he may be healed and fulfill his duties as a guardsman. We have so many challenges in this life, this imperfect world that we live in. When we pray for those involved in conflict or suffering pain, loss, death, and grief in a war-torn area around the globe, give them strength to live on, guidance, and wisdom to those leaders in charge and influential to move toward peace and safety. Give guidance and wisdom to the nations and this nation's leaders and those running for office as well as guidance and wisdom to this nation's voters who must decide the trajectory of our nation's story. God of every land and nation you have created all and you dwell among us in Jesus Christ. Listen to the cries of those who pray to you and grant that we proclaim the greatness of your name as we proclaim the greatness of your name. All people will know the power of love at work in this world. We ask this through Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And make us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. 
26, sent forth by God's blessing. <laughs>